Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guide. This is another episode of the OpenGL tutorial series and in this video we are going to understand the OpenGL pipeline and get started writing shaders. So the first thing that we need to understand is what is the graphics pipeline in OpenGL. So when we provide OpenGL with our vertex data to render, it goes through a bunch of different stages or steps and those are collectively called the graphics pipeline. Its main job is to transform the vertex data in whatever format we have provided into colored pixels onto the screen and it has uh, some stages that are fixed in OpenGL while others that we write our own programs for. And these programs that we write on our own are called shaders. So we can roughly divide the OpenGL graphics pipeline into two main parts. The first is the vertex processing part in which it operates on our vertex data and uh, transforms it and whatever. And the second part is the part in which it actually converts that vertex data into pixels onto the screen and then it colors those pixels. So in the first part which is the vertex processing part there are basically three main steps. The first is the vertex shader, the second is the tessellation step which consists of two shaders and then we have the geometric shader step, uh, step and uh, among these three steps we only care about the first one which is the one that we do have to write which is the vertex shader the other two are optional and uh, they are currently not our need they are used for some advanced features but we don't really care about those yet so the first thing that we need to do is actually write the shader in OpenGL, shaders are written in a language called GLSL which stands for OpenGL Shading Language and we actually write the shaders as source code in our C++ program or we could load them from a file as well. And then OpenGL actually is responsible for compiling those shaders since each GPU has a different architecture and uh, you know it's not actually well defined. So we actually write our shaders uh, as source code and then we are going to uh, give that source code to the OpenGL driver and it's going to compile it and then we are going to use it that way. So first of all let's actually write our shader and we are going to embed it in our C++ application as a string since it's quite small we don't need to load it from a file. So we are going to just define a const uh, string literal here and uh, that's going to just hold our vertex shader source code and uh, we are going to define it as a raw string literal so that we can span multiple lines easily. And uh, GLSL shaders must begin with a hashtag version directive which specifies the version of GLSL that we want to use which is uh, equal to the OpenGL version in modern OpenGL. And uh, OpenGL 4.5 we are going to say hashtag version 450 and core means the profile. So now we are going to declare our vertex shaders input. So let's go ahead and uh, dive this line a bit so in this line we are declaring basically a variable a position uh, a pose of uh, type vec2 and this vec2 here is um, of course a built-in in GLSL and uh, it specifies a two-dimensional vector of floats basically two floats and we are specifying that we are taking this in which means that this is coming as input in our vertex stage uh, from whatever the pre previous stage is and since our vertex shader is the first stage that means that the previous is just uh, the vertex data so basically we are getting this data data in here in this variable and then we are specifying its layout so we need to specify the layout of how this is going to be accessed and uh, currently in this layout there is only one uh, attribute that we need to specify which is the location so this location is the attribute index of this attribute that we are taking in which is equal to zero here and as you can see we are specifying this here so this must correspond to the attribute index in our vertex array and uh, the data type must match as well and now we are going to write the main function which returns nothing and uh, takes no arguments it's going to just uh, uh, you know process the is going to just pass the position as is into a special variable called GL position so the GL position is a built-in variable which specifies the final position that of our vertex stage so that's actually of type vec4 and um, uh, since we are not doing 3d yet we are going to specify 0 as the z coordinate and the w coordinate or the fourth coordinate should always be one in most cases and uh, yet this is going to be pretty much it for our vertex shader it does nothing special just passes whatever position it takes into the GL position variable and that's pretty much it. So yeah that's uh, pretty awesome and now we actually need to compile this shader using OpenGL. So for this we are going to actually make a utility function since we are going to be compiling multiple shaders so we don't want to repeat the code and we are going to just call it compile shader and it's going to actually not return void it's going to return GLUint which is the you know the ID of the shader object that we create and it's going to take two arguments the first is the GL enum. So GL enum is like an open GL. It's basically typed f to integer. It's the uh, the type of the shader. We are going to first of all take the type of the shader, and the second argument is going to be uh, the actual source code of the shader. We are going to take that as a string. So to compile this shader, we are going to go here and uh, mm, 
we are going to implement the function down here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create the shader. So we are going to create the shader as a variable of type GL unit and we're going to use GL create shader for that which actually returns the, uh, the whatever shader ID it has created and we are going to specify our type as well and in the end we are going to just return this shader. So now we need to upload our source code to the um, of the shader, associate this shader with the source code. So we are going to use GL shader source with our shader and we can specify multiple strings. We only want one. So we are going to say one and specify the address of our screen and we can leave the length as null pointer. This could be an array of lengths, but it's null because our strings are null terminated. So they don't need lengths. And then we are going to call GL compile shader, which is going to compile the shader. Now this compilation may fail if there's an error in our shader. So we need to check that and we need to, you know, report any errors that have occurred so for that we are going to define a gl int success and then we are going to use a gl get shader ip function and this function is used to get any particular uh, information about the shader and this p name specifies what information we want so we want to specify we want to get whether the um, you know shader compiles successfully so we are going to use gl compile status and we are going to pass in uh, the address of our success variable so that it can put the result in it and if our success is not true which means it failed to compile then we need to output the actual um, whether what errors occurred etc and that is present in the info log of the shader now to get the info log the first thing we need to find out is how many bytes is the info log so that we can allocate that much space for it and actually get that so to get that we are going to first of all create a gl int and we are going to just call it length this is the length of our info log and then we are going to use gl get shader iv again but this time with gl info log length which is going to tell us how many bytes we need in the info log so if this length is equal to zero that means that uh, there is no info log so we in that case we are going to just give an error saying that the shader compilation failed and no info log uh, was provided so we are going to say fail to compile shader and uh, we can say no info log here now in case there is an info log uh, which means the length is non-zero then we want to mm, create an std string we are going to just call it info log and we are going to create it uh, basically filled with zeros and whatever length we have got and now we are going to use the gl get sh uh, gl get shader info log function in order to actually get our info log so the first argument is the shader we are going to specify that then for the buff size this is how many bytes there are in our string and this is just the length and now for the length pointer we don't really care about how many bytes were written so we can pass null here and for our info log we are going to just say info log dot data so that we get it in here and yeah after that we have received our info log so we can give an error message so we are going to do fmt print with std error and we are going to say fail to compile shader and then we are going to output our info log so we are going to say info log and then we can put a new line and then we can write the whole info log and put another new line here so this pretty much completes our generic function for creating the info for creating compiling a shader and now we can go ahead and test this so in here you can see we are creating our vertex buffer and vertex data so after doing that we are going to just uh, uh, basically go ahead and yeah go here and we are going to create and compile our shader we are going to create a vertex shader and we are going to set it equal to uh, create a compile shader with the type of gl vertex shader and for the source we are going to just pass in our source code uh, the vertex shader source and uh, this should create the vertex shader and we should of course uh, remember to delete it uh, when we don't need it and we actually don't need shaders to uh, remain alive till the end we'll talk more about that later and if i run make you can see no errors are given which means it's working just to test this we are going to go ahead and uh, remove a semicolon here and you can see it uh, says fails to compile shader with the correct info log which specifies the error so we are going to add that back again and that means our system is working correctly so this stage basically outputs the vertices now in order to get these vertices onto the screen the first thing OpenGL does is a step called primitive assembly which involves taking all these vertices and making a shape out of them depending on how we want to draw it and that step is not something we write a shader for it's uh, done by OpenGL but we can of course control aspects of it as we'll see uh, later and uh, this, then OpenGL does rasterization which means it converts those uh, that uh, shape that it has got and it converts that into which pixels it needs to color on the screen that is again a step that is done by OpenGL not programmed by us and then we move on to the uh, the fragment shader now the fragment shader basically is run for each pixel and this pixel is basically called a fragment in OpenGL terminology so for each fragment the fragment shader specifies which color the screen should uh, you know be what color should the screen have for each fragment so that's what we specify in the fragment shader 
So currently we are going to just write a constant color in there but of course uh, fragment shaders can do a lot of lighting calculations and uh, other stuff as we'll uh, see in the future. So for now we are going to go ahead and write a simple fragment shader that just writes uh, a constant color for example white to the screen. So now we are going to go ahead and write our fragment shader. So we are going to just copy the vertex shader since the fragment shader is quite similar. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it here. And uh, let's just uh, name it to fragment shader source. And for this, we actually don't need to take any input. We could take input if we were outputting something in the vertex shader stage, but our vertex shader stage is not outputting anything. But we do need to output a color, which is going to be called our fragment color. So this output is basically the final color of this fragment. And uh, this output will go from here directly to the screen and this location is equal to zero specifier basically means we are writing to the first frame buffer we'll understand what those are in the future but uh, if we were drawing to like uh, multiple images we could choose other indices as well but currently we are not in the main function we are going to just set our fragment color to one this uh, constructor of act for basically sets all to one which means that it's going to be white so yeah we're going to just output a constant white color in our fragment shader here so to compile this, we're going to go here and we're going to just uh, basically do the same as the f uh, vertex shader, but this time for the fragment shader and we're going to uh, go ahead and destroy this at the end as well. So if I run that, you can see it compiles without any errors. And now we are going to have to link these shaders together in a program. So to actually use these shaders, we need to create a program and we need to link these shaders together and then we can use their program. So first we are going to create our program. Then we are going to use GL attach shader to uh, attach mm, sh uh, both of our vertex shader and the fragment shader to the program. So first we are going to attach the vertex shader and then we are going to attach the fragment shader as well. And uh, then we can link the program to, you know, basically link these shaders together and get it ready for using so for that we're going to use GL link program and we're going to just pass in our program as an argument and uh uh, similar to um, compile this link can also fail and we need to check it uh, like we were checking our compile shader so we're going to copy this and we're going to go here where we are linking the program and we're going to paste this here and uh, b uh, the basic idea is the same but instead of uh, using gl compile status we are going to be using gl link status so we are going to change link to compile and similarly in our debug outputs we are also going to change compile instead of compile we are going to say link and instead of using gl get shader we are going to use gl get program both for the iv and the info log and we are going to of course replace our shader variable with program so yeah this is going to be basically the same flow as the compile shader one and in the end where we are deleting the vertex array and the buffers we are also going to delete the program there and after the shaders have been linked they are actually not required by the program so we can delete the shaders right after we link the program but for the program we need to keep it and as you can see it gives no errors so now in order to use this program to draw our vertex array we are going to go ahead and after gl clear color we are going to do gl use program and uh, we only need to do this once since we are only got one program and this will activate that program now in order to actually draw this we need to use gl draw arrays but before we actually call that we first need to bind that vertex array and since we have got only one we are only going to do it at the start and we're going to give it our uh, vao and we are going to bind that as the vertex array and then we are going to go ahead and use gl draw arrays and this function will take a mode which is the shape basically that we want to draw in which is going to be gl triangles in this case and the first is the index of the first vertex which is going to be zero and we want to draw three vertices and yeah this will basically draw whatever vertex array is bound and as you can see we get our white triangle on the screen so yeah guys this is going to be pretty much it for this video and i'll see you in the next one in which we'll understand how uh, different aspects of the pipeline work and how we can add more attributes etc etc so make sure to like and subscribe and share this video with other people as well and bye